Hello, and welcome to the Logic Minute. Today, we'll be discussing the basics of monostable multivibrators. A monostable, unlike most logic, is about timing. So here, we'll show a basic monostable multivibrator waveform. The green will be our input, and the blue will be our output. As you can see, both of our signals start out low. However, as we see the rising edge trigger from the green input, we will see an output pulse width of TW. Alternatively, you could have the monostable trigger on the falling edge, in which case we would see the pulse width of TW after that initial pulse. Now into some device specifics. On the left here, we have a retriggerable waveform, where we see the first input trigger, our monostable will go high, and we would see an output pulse width of TW. However, because there is a second trigger, we would see one full pulse width of TW after the final trigger. Conversely, on the right, we have the non-retriggerable version, where when it sees that first trigger, the output goes high for what we would expect is TW, and despite the second trigger, we just get one pulse width of TW. So what would our setup on board look like? Well, here we have our LVC1G123 device, and in the top left, we have our two inputs, A0 and B. If the input is tied to A0, then it will be a falling edge trigger. If the input is tied to B, it'll be a rising edge trigger. Clear is something we'll talk about a little later, but I wanted to point out that if you tie it high, it will never be triggered. And some devices allow C external to be tied to ground. Please check your data sheet on whether or not that's possible. So up till now, we've referred to the pulse width as TW, but how do we calculate it? Well, it's the formula up here where K times R times C, where R and C are the resistor and capacitor from the previous slide. So to determine K, you could use this graph from the data sheet, where you could select your supply voltage, and then by going across from the given capacitances, you would find a value for K. And then by varying your resistor value, you could determine what pulse width you want. Alternatively, if you don't want to use the formula, we provide these graphs in our data sheet, where our pulse width is on the y-axis and the capacitance is on the x-axis. For example, if we wanted a pulse width of 1 millisecond, we would start from 10 to the 6th and we would go over, and at 200 kilo ohms, we would need an 8 nanofarad capacitor. At 100 kilo ohms, we would need a 12 nanofarad capacitor. At 10 kilo ohms, we would need a 100 nanofarad capacitor. At 5 kilo ohms, we'd need a 0.5 microfarad capacitor, and at 1 kilo ohm, we need a 1 microfarad capacitor in order to achieve this pulse width of 1 millisecond. So if we treat the red line as our R external over C external pin, we'll see that it's fully charged at the start. At the trigger, it will discharge, and it will slowly charge back up, and at 63.2%, our output will drop low, and it will be ready for another trigger. So what does the clear pin from earlier do? Well, you can see that as it's high, we have normal operation from earlier. However, as clear goes low, our external over C external goes high, and our output goes low. And then when clear returns high, we get one full pulse width of TW after the fact. Thank you for watching. If you think a monostable multivibrator is correct for your system, please visit ti.com. And if you have any more questions, please feel free to ask them on e2e.com.